שהוא עניין זור לגמרי מהנמשל. The moshal is totally strange to the nimshal. You want to understand a certain Indian, and here you completely divert to a different realm, a different world than the nimshal is. And from that nimsh, from that moshal, you derive a similarity to the to the nimshal. <clears throat> and ultimately what you say is what you define but you defined to the moshal is not the nimshal but it's, you say it's something akin similar to it but not it it's a totally strange thing for the, for the, for the nimshal to put it in simple terms since we're all familiar what a moshal is the principle of the moshal is you are trying to explain some type of a spiritual, some type of conceptual reality, but you, but you're not, you're not familiar with with concept altogether. So you go down to the world, to a worldly presence, and you show within the worldly presence. Let me first define world versus godly. Godly is that which is which is true in and of, it, in and of itself. Like the Ramam says, Mo Tsurisha in the first being first being means there is no creator to this to this element. There is no source, there is no basis. It is in its own its own basis. <coughs> World does not have that quality whatsoever. Everything in the world has a beginning. Not only beginning, how it was built, but what enticed this building. What caused it, it to be thought about, of it and to, be, and to be built. That's what world is. Since that we are in the, in the world, and you want to understand a nimshol, one of the Indian that is super worldly. So then you go make a moshe, which means you come down into the world and you demonstrate within world something that is akin to that which is higher than world. Within the world of the country, you can't, because that's where you're talking, because you're talking to, to a worldly orientation. But within world itself, you find something that is that is not exactly that a little bit outside of world the uh, parameters. That becomes your motion. And that's what the motion is, <coughs> even though you're trying to explain something which is super worldly. <coughs> But you go down to something which is completely strange to that to that which is trying to explain, which is world like an extent. And from there you draw the similar by similarity how this is in in the higher element. This is the information. The alkane came in the middle of the second line, the alkane, and thus, since that the moshal is something which is totally strange to the nimshal, therefore, ha seichel shemuvu nali ha moshal, the seichel that gets to be understood, the ha moshal, via the moshal, enoi ki mahuz ha seichel, ha muvan shali ha di ha moshal, is not like the mahus, mahus of the seichel, we'll try to translate the word mahus in a moment, like the mahus of the seichel that is understood without the moshu, not to the process of the moshu. <coughs> <coughs> now we bring a moshu in order to understand the seichel. But what we're saying is, that even after that the moshal helps you to understand the seichel, the seichel that surfaces as a result is not 
kimahus, like the zehus of the seichel, that you know that you can that if you understand it, besad the mosh. What is the what is the ene kimahus a seichel? I'm telling you, mosh. I'm telling you, mosh. The word mahus, mahus is not a measurable ingredient. Mahus means mahu. What is it? What is its reality? What makes it be? Not who creates it. What makes it be? What, what does it stand for? What made mahus? So when you understand the seichel, the concept, through the indirect process of the moshe, what do you get through the moshe? What, what does it tell you about the seichel? It cannot tell you the reality of the seichel. It can only tell you its appearance, its, its form. form. It cannot tell you, it doesn't, it cannot give you the, the real thing. Because the real thing, the real thing <coughs> is known only to the seichel. We discussed, what is a seichel? This is a, an important, an important Principle to remember all the time. Be mentioning it. Seichel is not just the logic system, logic process. Seichel is one of the phenomenal koichos, qualities of the neshama. What's a neshama? Neshama and goof are two different worlds completely. Neshama, the neshama, yes, the neshama gives, provides koichos, seichel and midas and so forth. But this koicha is that the neshama provides like seichel and midas. Even after after they 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 provided by the neshama, and you are experiencing that they remain neshama quality. The whole phenomenon, concept of seichel, is a neshama concept. How do we know things within a worldly context? You touch it. Not only you touch it, and what touch touches not only you touch, you touch it, and and you touch something that is that is a, 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 a solid body. This solid body has an effect. What is the effect? That you cannot go through it unless you go around it. In other words, it has, it has an, a, an, an, an implication, a result, an effect, a physical effect. This is how things in, are in the world. <coughs> so let us take a muscle. You enter a room like this room. And there are a number of tables and chairs. The body can only identify with the tables and chairs. What is the table to the body? An obstacle. 
it stands there and, and, and blocks my way. If the table is not heavy, I can push it away. If it's heavy, I cannot push it away. That's about it. But the Seichel, when you observe the room, you don't even contemplate moving the table. Because the table isn't the place where it belongs. It's not an obstacle. It designs the room where you want to be. It complements the room. It's not an obstacle. Completely different view. That is known only to the Seichel. Only the Seichel identifies with the true significance of what there is. Why is the table there? Not because there was no place to put it away, put it in place, it takes up room. Because it belongs there. And the country, they, <coughs> if it weren't there, we would bring it in. So this type of seichel, to know of something that is, use this as our as our catalyst. Know something that is true because it's a, because the seichel, the seichel confirms it and seichel demands it. The Seichel says that a room is supposed to have furnishings. Not your feet because you're tired and or, or, or the use of just because that's what the room is. Now let us say someone who knows that. But in, but in order to fully understand its significance, he has to contemplate the mushal, exist, the existing mushal. What the mushal? What is this table served for? Even if, if, if he sees what the table serves for, then the table find, finds place in his mind in this room. By looking at it as such, he does not relate to it, he doesn't see any significance in, in, in the furnishings in the room. When you identify <coughs> the practical significance, the practical use, then he can say, okay, yeah, it belongs there. You know, there's a whole concept, the sikhri aspect by him comes from the, from, uh, as in, from outside, from the moshe. This is what the Rebbe says. At that point, the Sikhri aspect itself is not the Mahus of Seichel. It's not the relative of Seichel as that, that which is known directly from the Seichel itself. The Neshomev compels it, not, not the practical view of, it, of the room. It's a different kind of a Seichel. Eineki Mahus a Seichel <coughs> it's a different reality of Seichel when it is understood because when it's understood it's understood from an external approach from a non-Seichel approach into Seichel Whereas when it's known directly, it means that you found in it an, 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 a, a sikhli element directly. A living element in, uh, directly. <coughs> that sikhli which is known, which is understood, 
that seichel has been identified by by your own by the pure by your own seichel on a different level. And I want to again demonstrate this. This is not even a muscle. This is demonstrate the Indian. <coughs> I remember we were in France, in Paris. We went to, to a museum. That museum was um, um, had many whatever it is. I, I don't know what the what the general design of the museum was, but it had many statues, and the statues were mammoth lifelike. Human human statues representing historical events or whatever. Mammoth lifelike. To the extent that some people would actually walk up to the statue and say, hey, ask me a question, the statue would be, <laughs> they would be disappointed. However, if you looked at the statue with your own living seichel, you could not be confused, no matter how, how lifelike they are. It wouldn't take you more than a second to say this is just a statue. Why? How would it? It, it does appear, Mom is extremely, uh, extremely uh, 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 similar. Because you would be looking at it with a living sake. Life identifies life. If you're looking at it, with a physical cycle, physical view, yes, you can be confused. But if you, your, your, your observation is supported, is the, the background of the mission is a cycle, and cycle is a life, living element of the Nisham. Life identifies life. And it's a completely different identity. When you find out that the statue is not a statue, or in the statue is a statue, by by testing it, or you find out that it's a statue by looking at it and saying, "Hey, this is a statue," it's a different recognition. It strikes you completely differently. This is what I'm saying. That that which you know, Aladeh Hamoshal, is not at all similar. Not Kimahus does not represent the reality of that which is known. Shuloy Aladeh Hamoshal. Without the Moshal. Why? Because that which you know, without the Moshal, you have brought in the living quality of your Seichel. Not the logical quality mm-hmm. of the Seichel. Not the sense element of the Seichel, but the living aspect of the Seichel. This is what we are repeating constantly. Seichel is a neshama koyach, which means a neshama koyach means that it is alive and well at all levels, even at the most practical level. When you say two times two equals to four, which is a, to a bar seichel, it has a seichel as element. It is not just a, 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 a declaration of fact. Like we once said, pointed out that two times two equals to four. The first time I heard this expression is in America. Prior to that, we were used to use a different expression. Two times two is four. The difference between is four and equals to four is very subtle. It's very simple. Is equals to four, but it, the implication is, is very different. Equals to four means that the two and this two are the, are the same as if they were separate. But it equals to four. Is four means that now there's a combination of two and two. It's a different reality. These two are now, now a conglomerate of four, which has a different a different uh, value and different presence, 
and a different a different respect. This aspect, the sikhli element, even on the simplest level, this is an ashama element. This is the life element in, in the sikh. This is the point which, which I'm making all the time. The koiches ha nefesh, even the most practical down to earth koiches, they never cease to be in the shoma koiches. Even though they're used in totally in a practical way. Like we talked about the hand, the hand is used to transport. An object. You use, you use it in your hand to bring a cup of water to your mouth. There's a fundamental difference between the hand bringing the water to your mouth and 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 uh, a robot bringing water to your mouth. The hand serves the water. The robot just brings the water over and it, for, to, to be accessible. And we can readily observe it. If you readily observe it, you, know, you go to a wedding and there are different waiters. There's a waiter that serves your plate, there's a, a waiter that gives you a plate. And you readily see that this, it's a different, a different, different way of, this a different action. Even though it's the same result with the hand. This is the pshat. When you know it through a marshal, it's like knowing it from, from an, as an outsider. You know only the result. But when you know it directly, you know it from a living perspective. And in the Kim Husa Seichel, it's not in that realm, it's not that type of life of Seichel as the one that you know through the Amoshal. Again, I want to call your attention to this. This is not the first time we have this. It's a phenomenal thing. The Rebbe does not explain this principle. That the Seichel HaMuvna, the HaMoshel, is not Kimut HaSeichel HaMuvna, the Seichel HaMoshel. He doesn't explain what's the difference. He only says the moshal is something which is peripheral to the seichel, to the Indian. It's an outside, it has nothing to do with the seichel. But what, what is the resulting difference, he doesn't explain. Why? Because he's talking to Baal Seichel. He wants the Baal Seichel to understand it directly. Okay, let's continue. We have two minutes, that's a lot of time. Okmei kein hoin haparso. And thus, this is the demonstration of Dina, the parso. The parso that is between Tzatzilus and Bria. My parso is like I said, the, mod, the, the, the illustration of a parso is like a moshul. And what's a moshul? A moshul is when you, when you deviate from the seichel. And he starts talking about something which is completely, completely strange to the seichel, but by the motion you come to, understand, to 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 demonstrate and to point to the seichel. So this is a parsa. Shezeho which means that the parsa represents this this is a phenomenon. You're going from Atzilus into Bria. You begin to speak about the Inanachir. Shaloi me'inyan ho atzilus. Not when the atzilus is bringing itself to Bria. I'm going to talk to you about something completely unrelated to atzilus. Lay me'inyan ho atzilus. By this introduction. Shaloi me'inyan ho atzilus. But I will introduce you something that will 
be alluding to Atsilus, this is what makes it possible for you to accept Atsilus. Mahayna, which means to say, the Bechin as Chochmo di Brio. Now, the aspect of Chochmo of Brio. He starts from Chochmo because Chochmo, this is the pinnacle, this is the highest sphere, the highest Koyach in Brio. Which means this is the best means by which Bina can possibly relate to Atsilus. I mean, Brio will constantly relate to Atsilus. Chochmo. The beginning of Chochmah of Brio, he behaved from Mhus Acher, Mhus HaChochmah de Atsilus. It's in a thousand different manner and a different reality than the Mhus HaChochmah de Atsilus. Now, the Mhus Therefore, for the Chochmah of Brio to be presented with Atsilus aspect, you have to give it to a Moshe. You can present it directly. As is described in Tere in, 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 in this Mayim Paschal Yom. All right, this will be it for today. I wish you tomorrow we'll go into this Yuvanza. Okay, have a great day.